So on the phone with me right now is the gentleman that we were talking about last hour. Andy, is this you? Yes, sir, it is. I am so glad that you agreed to call into the program because I've been blowing a head gasket. I found this story, I think it was last Friday. I've been waiting for Monday to come around so I can finally talk about this. And I spent the last hour singing your praises as you fight the EPA. Let me let me do the lead-in for those people just joining us real quick. This gentleman lives in Wyoming. He and his family decided to uh, build a little pond in the backyard. And now the EPA, what is it, Andy, about $75,000 a day? Am I reading that right, that they're trying to fine you? Yes, sir. It's uh, every day that they deem I'm out of compliance is $75,000 a day plus criminal, civil charges, and the list goes on and on and on. Didn't you get, according to the story that I was reading, didn't you get permission from the state of Wyoming to build this pond or go at least through the process of doing it according to all of the rules and regulations? Uh, yes, sir, I did. I, I have a um, Wyoming stock pond uh, reservoir permit through um, Cheyenne. Uh, I got issued the permit. I, I built my project, and then two years later, the EPA is stepping in and saying, you can't do that, you have to tear it out, and with all these all these threats and everything else. Okay, so has the state of Wyoming offered to step up and join you in this fight? Because, I mean, Wyoming gave you permission. Now the feds are coming along and saying, you don't have permission, you're in trouble. I would think right. the state of Wyoming would come in and step in on, on your behalf to fight this. Well, they are. They are very much on my side. They they have my backing 100%. They just, um, I, I, I think basically they don't know what to do. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we have senators on our on our side. Uh, I just spoke with the the governor's office this morning. Good. Um, we have a tremendous amount of political pressure, um, and, and it's going really well. We we just were on the Glenn Beck show just a few minutes ago. Good. Um, it, it it's just crazy that you know, and the EPA has made all these all these threats to me, and there's absolutely no proof, no nothing, saying that I have done anything to the environment. Okay, now let's talk about those threats for just a minute. Are, are part okay. of the threats or some of the threats arrest? Um, it doesn't. I didn't read that specifically, but it okay. did say criminal charges. Th that's what made me uh, think that arrest when they say criminal charges. But my first thought there was, well, hold on now. You have a county sheriff. They would have to go through him. Oh, it, yeah, it's unbelievable. I, I think it's, uh, you know, they, <laughs> they basically are treating me as if I'm guilty and I have to prove myself innocent at this point. Right. Well, and part of that is, according to the story I was reading, which is they are accusing you of having, however you built this, done something that is now polluting the waterways. What are they talking about? Which is, that is absolutely crazy. Because when we built this, we were very, very responsible. I put in an 80-foot drain pipe so the existing water can flow through it. And then as I built up this little dike, um, you know, we used all the existing material that we dug out. We basically dug a big hole. We put it up as a dike. We closed the valve. It filled up. At no time did we discharge any fill material into the stream. And this this little pond is crystal clear. It has brook trout, brown trout. We have all kinds of ducks and geese coming in. And the water coming out of this pond is better than the water coming in. Um, well, I, you know, I'm up here in Gillette, Wyoming, so it's often the case when we're uh, talking about you know, water coming in and out, the air that comes out of the steam stacks at our power plants here are cl it is clearer, cleaner than the air they sucked in through the bottom. But try telling that to the EPA. You have a phone call. This is Glenn, who's on the phone. This is Nick Bilal. How are you? Very good. What you got, Nick? Well, I was reading the article, and I wanted to clarify something. Uh, uh, he said that he was going to... Um, where he got some state help uh, from cert certain state officials that have wrote, written letters mm -hmm. and have done some other things on his behalf um, that are officials of the state of Wyoming. Who right. are those people? Because I believe that the people who are helping our Wyoming residents um, fight the EPA and these ridiculous regulations, they should deserve some praise as well. Okay. Thank you, Nick. Who, who are these people? I know some of them are senators. Yeah, yes, sir. Um, I've had an overwhelming response from Mike Enzi's office. Senator Barrasso, and also, uh, now this is out of Wyoming, but uh, right. David Vitter out of Louisiana has been a tremendous right. help as well. Um, I spoke with the governor's office this morning. Uh, they uh, are on board with it. Um, they're just beginning to get in, involved with it. We kind of 
started at the top and now it's filtering back down a little bit. So mm -hmm. we're trying to get Wyoming riled up about it and Good. just trying to educate people what's going on. Okay. Now let, let's get back to, and I don't want to take up too much of your time here, but I, I just want to make sure that we're clear on uh, what the EPA is doing out in your area. How, this was the big question around the office here as we were talking about before I went on the air. How did they find out that you even had a pond? Well, I have a very, um, to put it, to put it lightly, a vindictive neighbor that works okay. for the government. Right. And so he got the ball rolling on that. You know, the funny thing is, is the EPA and the Army Corps have never been involved in stock ponds, and especially in this area. Right. And uh, the government officials that I worked with on this project, you know, designed it. They they helped me fill the permit out. Um, they have no working knowledge of the Army Corps or the EPA. It's There's a huge communication gap. And, and now they're trying to come down on me for it. <laughs> Has anyone from the EPA been out on your property to actually take a look at this? There was one guy that came out from the Denver office, and he was here very, very briefly. He did not take any kind of a water sample. He didn't do any kind of a, a study. He just basically uh, showed up and told me what was going on. And um, and and then they, uh, I didn't hear from him for a while. And then off and on, I've heard from him in the last two years. Okay. Well, they're going to have to, in in some way, prove that they've actually done some kind of a study to show that you're doing any kind of damage to the environment. This is Glenn. Who's on the phone? This is Don. Yes, sir. What you got? I was calling to see if they uh, have a legal fund set up for them so somebody could donate to them. Well, that's a good question because this could get expensive, and I'm wondering, is the state of Wyoming going to help you, or do you have your own legal fund, or neighbors helping you? How are you going to... Uh, yeah, and uh, right now I'm just trying to work as much overtime as I can. But my brother actually uh, set up a fund. It's it's called Save the Stock Pond at um, Blogspot.com. Okay. And uh, you know I I've also been offered by some really big legal foundations are, are are starting to take interest in this, and they they want to take it on as well. So you know right now, yeah, I am paying out of my pocket, and it, any any help would would be incredible. <laughs> Okay, well, I, I tell you what you can do. This, I'll do what I can because we're both here in Wyoming. If you get a hold of my website, which is boldrepublic.com, and my okay. email address is boldrepublic at aol.com. And okay. I've got listeners, a Facebook page, things like that. So I'll go ahead and try to get as much attention you know, in the state of Wyoming. And the show is carried in some other states as well. Uh, heading okay. your way to see if we see if you can get you know because we, we in this region not just in the state of Wyoming we in this region need to have your back on this one if they can get away with this yeah. then we have no property rights left let's face it well well and and my main focus on this case is not necessarily my pawn but right. um, what I want to say is I want to stand up for all the property owners for all the farmers and ranchers across the United States because if they do this to me they're coming for you and yeah. they're, right now, they're trying to change the rules on um, navigable water of the United States. Mm -hmm. And see, they're trying to reach out on me because it's way, way, way out there. And they're just trying to gain jurisdiction. So we need to get riled up. We need to get educated because this right here, this case, is going to affect every single property, landowner, rancher, anybody in the state of Wyoming and across the country. First off, I'm impressed that you can say navigable. I can never say that word. Uh, that yeah, and, navigable. Yeah, I just it, it just doesn't roll off the tongue for me. And I've been on that <laughs> story for a while myself in this uh, radio program. The EPA is trying for a power grab here. And when I read your story, I think it was on Friday that I first read your story. That's the first thing I thought about. Here's just a little pond somewhere, and here's an attempt yeah. to grab some water, which if you look at our Constitution, they're not supposed to have any control over that. You cannot navigate. I mean – I don't know. Well, Wyoming one time had in a piece of legislation uh, that you know some senator or representative said he wanted an aircraft carrier for the state of the Wyoming. I doubt you could put that in your pond. <laughs> well, let me give you an idea of what I'm dealing with here. My pond yeah. is approximately 40 feet wide by about 600 feet long. It's less than one acre. Right. The water that they're deeming navigable is about two feet wide by six inches deep. You yeah. couldn't navigate that with a little kid's inner tube. No, you couldn't. Well, and, and something else I was trying to bring up last hour so people would be perfectly clear about this. If you're damming up something, it's not as if people downstream on that little creek are not going to get any water. 
what's going to happen is your no. pond's going to fill up, and then the water filters out after the pond fills up and continues on downstream. Yes, sir. And um, actually, the water that's coming in, every ounce of it that's coming in is also flowing right through our spillway. We do not in any way, shape, or form shut this thing off. It is completely self-regulating. Um, you know, it's, it basically, we, we just, you know, made a diversion where it gathers a, a body of water, but just like you say, it flows right over that, that spillway, and uh, it continues on. And that water that's coming out is crystal clear. It aerates as it drops off the spillway. I mean, in every way, it's an environmental benefit. I thought about that, too. Didn't you say you had stocked the pond with some fish? Actually, that kind of got misinterpreted. Okay. All the fish that are in there are wild. And uh, we have three-pound brook trout, world-class trophy brook trout. Mm -hmm. We have four- and five-pound brown trout, along with all the ducks and the geese and the crayfish and all the other aquatic species. And that's what I think is kind of funny is here, here the, you know, the EPA is saying, destroy this, take this out. Yeah. Well, this is an established habitat that's been up for two years. And uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> it, just does, it just goes against what I thought the EPA stood for. And I want people to know that this is what our tax dollars is paying for. They yeah. are harassing the guy that pays his taxes, that goes to work every day, that's a family man that has done nothing to the environment whatsoever. They're trying to come after me just to set a precedent and gain a little jurisdiction. That's all this is. Yeah, yeah, no, that's absolutely all of this is. Well, and I, I, that's another thing that I was thinking about when I was reading this article originally, initially, is I thought, I bet you can sit back now and just watch nature come over the hillsides. I mean, all name your animal, right down to the I jackalope. It just, it, Absolutely. I mean, the, we have bald eagles. We have sandhill cranes coming in. I've seen a big giant bull moose came in a while back. We have uh, mink and muskrat. Um, you name it. I mean, blue heron is around here. We, we have created a sanctuary on our property, and it's a place where the fish go freely, and, uh, you know, the, the birds and the ducks and the, everything comes in, and it's, it's just crazy to me that they want me to tear this out just to set a point. Right. Well, okay. And, uh, like, like I said, everybody needs to make sure, not just in Wyoming, but around this region, we all need to have your back on this one. So if you'll do me that favor, again, boldrepublic at AOL.com is the email address. Just send me some information that, that I can go ahead and post on my Facebook and on my website. You also have this phone number. So as yes, the sir. story develops, feel free to call into the radio program. I'll probably contact you from time to time because I'd like to be okay. with you every step of the way to make sure you win this thing. I, I sure appreciate that, and I just I just want to say that I'm standing up for the people in Wyoming, okay. all the landowners out there. We need to get together, and we need to shut this down. All right, Andy, we're with you every step of the way. All right, I sure right. appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you for thank you for calling in. I appreciate that. Well, okay, he is doing all the right things. I said last hour, I was hoping that he would have called, not just his representatives in D.C., his senators, for example but would have gotten a hold of the governor's office and so on, and he has. So he's taken all the right steps and making a lot of noise by getting on radio shows and newspaper stories and so on across the country.